To understand MRP system, you need to understand what are independent and dependent demands are. Dependent demands is the caused by the demand for a higher level item. Simply put, dependent demands items are components and parts. So all components and parts are dependent demands items, which require a demand for a higher level item. Metal parts, wheels, engines, and tires, these are the dependent demands items. What is independent demands then? Independent demands are finished goods and end items. In this case, independent demands is car. As you know, car consists of thousands of parts and components. For example, tires and wheels and engines, these are the critical components and parts to produce a car. So in order to produce this car, we need those items to be ready. So timing is very important, right? As you see, the demands for these parts and components are dependent upon the demands of a car, which is the higher level item. If there is high demand for a car, then those parts and components need to be ordered accordingly. So how much to order and when to order? A very critical information in order to produce a car's on time. Because time to market is one of critical order winning criteria today. Please note that demand for independent demand items such as car here cannot be forecasted, but for I'm sorry, cannot be calculated, but forecasted. So we cannot forecast demand of car, but we can forecast based on the customer, you know, previous customer order or company's aggregate production plan. So based on this forecast of demand for cars, these dependent demand items, wheels, engines, and tires can be calculated. So that's the actually MRP system. How to order and then when to order is not actually the easy one. It is very complex process. Requires the you know high level of you know computerized system. So independent demand item is the items that are ready to be sold and demands not related to other item simply call this is final end product. And dependent demand items are derived demand items for component parts, sub-assemblies, or raw materials. So MRP is the logic. So you have to understand MRP is the logic. As I explain the MRP explosion problems later on, you will understand why MRP is the logic. MRP is the logic for determining the number of parts, components, and materials needed to produce a product, which is the end item. It provides time scheduling information specifying when each of the materials, parts, and components should be ordered and produced. To information, how much of each item each part to obtain, and when to order or produce the part, considering the lead time information. Because when you order a certain item, part, we may not receive today. Because it takes uh, sometimes a week, sometimes more than a week. So lead time information should be considered. That's why it's a very complex process. Simply put, dependent demands drives MRP system. Based on the brief information I provided, here is the simple question. Dependent demands and independent demands items differ in that for any product, all components are dependent demands items. That is true. Inherently, all components are dependent demands items. And need for independent demand items is focused, right? And need for dependent demand items is calculated based on the number of independent demand items. So all of them are true. So the answer is E. Now let's look at the MRP system structure. 
So in this diagram, I will show you two. Two. Uh, one is the input of MRP system. The other one is the MRP output. And then you have to understand the MRP system is run by MRP computer program. So that's why we need to provide some of the input to MRP computer program to run this MRP and it generates the primary report and secondary report. Let's think about MRP system input. There are three major input to MRP uh, system. First major input is master production schedule. We simply call master schedule or MPS. This master production schedule states what is the requirement of a particular product during a specific time period. And this is generated from either customer direct order or forecast of demand from customers based on the company's aggregate production plan. So customer direct order, you know, sometimes inter sometimes external customers or corporate customers such as Dell or Samsung or internal customers such as marketing department, they have a direct order. And sometimes we just have a forecast of demand from customers based on the customer uh, company's you know aggregate strat strategy, production plan strategy. These are the two major sources to master production schedule, which contains the information about end items. The second major input is the BOM or Bureau of, Bureau of Material File. These are identified the specific materials used to make each item and correct the quantities of each. And uh, if there is any engineering design changes, it should be included in the, this BOM file. For example, smartphone requires constant engineering design changes such as screen size and so on. Then if any design change happens, then those design change information should be included in the BOM file. Finally, third input is the inventory record file that contains the data such as number of unit on hand or number of unit on order. And that comes from inventory transactions. It tells you that what is the basic, basic status of inventory of different items. So these three sources, MPS, Master Production Schedule, BOM, and Inventory Record File, these are become the data source for MP. These are data for source for MRP program, which generate the primary report, which is plan order release for inventory and production control, and secondary report, such as exception report, planning report, and report for performance control. These are the output. Let me briefly deal with the uh, in those uh, major input to MRP system one more time. You know, master production schedule we call MPS or master schedule deal with end item. And while aggregate plan provide just general range of operation, this MPS specify exactly when need to be produced and when to produce. So aggregate plan only shows overall quantities to produce without specifying type, while MPS shows the quantities of each type with information about production time frame. So that deals with end items. Second major input, as I told you, is BOM, Bureau Material File. We can also call product structure file or product tree because it contains the, you know, how this end item looks like. In this case, product A is end item, and this consists of part B and part C, 2B and 2C, and part B consists of 1D and 4E, and part C consists of 2F, 5G, and 4H. So that's what end item A looks like. So it contains the complete product description. And end item is level 0. And then 
level 1, level 2, and it goes on and on, on all the way to level n. If there is any engineering design change happen to end item A, then it changes all the other components and parts. This is very important information to MRP system. Final input is the, uh, the inventory record file. Contains the extensive amount of information on every item that is produced, ordered, or invented in the system. Basically, basic status of inventory record. That's the third major input to MRP system. So, so far I just briefly explained what each MRP system is and what are the three major input to MRP system. In the next video lecture, I will explain how to calculate BOM, BOM or Beetle material problems. Thank you.